All right, lots to discuss with Dan Riskin. He's CTV science and tech expert. Good morning to you, Dan. Uh, good to see you. So this is the first U.S. moon landing in 50 years, potentially. How big is this? Yeah, I mean, Apollo 17 in 1972. That's the last time the U.S. touched down onto the moon. So it's been a while. And of course, the U.S. is talking about sending humans to the moon. And so they would like to make sure they've got everything in place. So the mission here is pretty straightforward. It's just really to stick the landing. Uh, there's not a lot to this spacecraft. It doesn't drive around or anything like that. Once it lands, Four, a little antenna three. is going to stick up. Yeah, That's about mission. it. But, uh, it, you know, just the feasibility of getting it up into orbit and then on its and mission to the moon is a big deal. And that rocket that's sending it up there, this is the first use of this new Vulcan Centaur rocket from United Launch Alliance. And so it's an important step forward when we look at the privatization of the space race and different companies. This is not a SpaceX uh, launch. This is a, a company, United Launch Alliance, with a brand new rocket that's going to be a regular player going forward. A regular player. And so for those who are in the industry, for people like you scientists who are watching this, does that make you excited or does it make you a little nervous? You know what? I, nothing but excitement on my side. I, I mean, the, first of all, these there are no people on this thing. So the stakes are not as high as they would be if you had someone strapped to the top of it. Uh, the plan is eventually for people to be strapped to the top of it. So this uh, Vulcan Centaur rocket, this is the first certification flight for this technology. The second certification flight is scheduled for April, and that is to have a cargo ship that looks a little bit like a miniature space shuttle. It's called a Dream Chaser. And the plan is to have that on top of the rocket for the second launch. And that is going to go to the ISS to bring some, some goods up there. And ultimately, that is going to morph into a spacecraft that people ride in. And so um, we are working toward having humans going up to space on a regular basis, to the moon and to beyond. Um, but it's the diversification of the companies that are competing in the space race. That's just good. That's what the whole idea of private enterprise and having private companies do this. It's not so you can just have one company that's doing everything. You want to have many different companies competing with each other, innovating, and that's what we're seeing here. So it's really a great step forward. And we're waiting for Canadians to play a big role this year, too. Absolutely. Well, Canada's got a big role in the Artemis mission, which, of course, is uh, where we're most excited right now. Jeremy Hansen, Canadian, is going to be on Artemis II, which will be a mission that takes humans out beyond the moon and back to Earth. But Artemis III will be when uh, the, the, the feet hit the soil, so to speak, or the regolith. Uh, and that's when humans are supposed to go back to the moon. And so for the U.S., um, this is kind of a big deal. It's one thing to say we're going to go to the moon, but we haven't done it in 50 years. It's quite different when you can say, oh, yeah, we landed in February and we're, we're well on our way towards our mission of Artemis III landing on the moon. Okay, and between now and the 23rd of February, will we be able to track what's happening? We'll be able to follow along? Not a lot of rocket science happening. There will be a couple of minor adjustments, but for the most part, it's like a baseball that's been thrown from the pitcher's mound, and it's making its way towards the home plate. It just takes a month to get there because it's a big baseball field. So uh, this has to get to the moon. It's going to go into an orbit around the moon, and then that peregrine lander is going to land on the surface of the moon. Right now, the plan is to have it land fairly close to the South Pole. That's the place with the most scientific interest right now because of water and other things, other goodies that are located there. And that's ultimately where the Artemis mission is supposed to land as well. So uh, we'll be keeping an eye on it. But until February 23rd, it should be pretty quiet. Dan, thanks so much. Good to see you. As always, Dan Riskin is our science and tech expert here at CTV.